What's going on, y'all? It's the Kid J. Nolan here. Hey, man, I really thought I was done for the day with making content, but I just got hit with some brand spanking new information. Dr. Dre is fielding offers to sell his music catalog. Man, what the hell going on? So in an article that was just put up on Variety.com, they're saying Dr. Dre is selling his catalog assets to Universal Music and Shamrock Holdings in a $200 million plus deal. Now you heard that right. There's two separate companies that are purchasing the rights to his music. Okay. His music assets generate about $10 million annually, $10 million a year. Right. And they're being acquired by Shamrock Holdings and Universal Music Group. The deals, which have been rumored for several weeks are said to be nearly closed and were shopped by Dr. Dre's longtime attorney, Peter Paterno. And again, they talking about 200 million. The assets are set to include artist royalties from two of his solo albums and his writer's share of NWA royalties, his producer royalties, and the writer's share of his song catalog where he doesn't own the publishing. Dre has been in a long fight to try to get the publishing back for The Chronic. Shamrock Holdings is looking to get 75 to 90% of all of that. Universal Music Group is in the runners to get around anywhere between 10 to 25%, depending on how this deal lands. Not only would the publishing of The Chronic be included in that deal, but also the masters of The Chronic. Now, for those of y'all that may not know, The Chronic was supposed to actually revert back to Dre's ownership in August of this year. Due to Snoop acquiring the company a year ago, he decided to do right by Dre because Dre always did right by him. So now that he has that coming back to him, the ownership is going to skip over Dre and go to Shamrock Holdings and Universal Music Group. In addition to The Chronic, Dre is also going to be giving up his share in Kendrick Lamar's catalog. As y'all know, he produced some records on Good Kid, Mad City, one of the biggest albums of the last decade. And of course, you know, Kendrick was signed to Dre's Aftermath Interscope label. So all of his shares in Kendrick's music are going to be sold in this deal. Kind of feel like he's getting lowballed at 200 million, but who am I to talk about it, man? I don't even got 200,000 right now. <laughs> Now, even though he's giving up all of these assets, what he's not giving up is his share in his ownership of Aftermath. So all of the other catalog that came out on Aftermath, 50 Cent, Eminem, those projects, his share in those, he's still keeping. So he's still going to be eating, you know, off of music for the rest of his life. But he's giving up that $10 million that he's been getting or should have been getting to take a lump sum up front. I've talked about this in numerous occasions where artists, producers, songwriters are taking these big payouts. And I keep telling y'all, they're doing this because they don't want to wait on their money. $10 million a year for Dre is like chump change. I know that sounds bad. I know that sounds pompous, but for real, for real, $10 million a year for Dre is nothing. This man became nearly a billionaire off a headphone acquisition. $200 million that he can get into his portfolio for him to invest in other companies, invest in other businesses, other assets. That's the big play. And he could sign more artists. He could put more music out. He could do all of that stuff. He put himself in position in order to do that. And I know in music, it seems so personal. These projects are your babies, your creations. You live with them. You die by them. And I totally understand that. However, when you look at any other business, they go through periods where the original owners will sell them off and try to get double, triple to work. At some point, people just detach their personal feelings from it. And it's like, if I want to do it all over again, I can't. Now, you're probably not going to have the same amount of success, but you already got the money. You could do passion projects. You could fund college for your kids if that's something you're trying to do. Your grandkids set up life for the lineage that comes three generations, four generations after you. Some of y'all might think, oh, well, keeping the music in the family is going to do that. Well, $10 million a year is nothing. If you could get $200 million in your portfolio, you go out and make some investments. Then you look up and that same $200 million is now generating $600 million. You're going to have a totally different tune when you start talking about these types of things. Now, there's no guarantee that that's going to happen, but Dre's history has shown us that he can get to the money. But hey, man, that's all the information I got for y'all at this current moment. Go ahead and let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. Share, share, share this video. And if this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. If you need to know some more information about the music business, you need some help navigating the game and all of that type of stuff, go ahead and hit realjnolan.com. 
you can either get the book, The Pin Game Portfolio, Volume 2, or you can book a direct consultation with me to get you some one-on-one -on -one help. Either way, the choice is yours. Much love and respect, y'all. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.